Hello friends, how are you? Welcome to another edition of Ask Me Anything with a Twist because today we're going to be talking about fresh ideas and hot off the press marketing tips. Yes and amen. Okay, so I wanted to drop in because just today on Facebook I saw something that was very interesting and what this business owner did, I'm not going to reveal what this business owner does because I want to make it here nice and clear. What this entrepreneur did was take a social event and then find a way to market their business. So as I'm going to be chatting with you, I want you to think about a social event to market your business. I'm about to show you an ad that I saw on Facebook. Trying to move away from your family? We can help. Alexa Cabello said, tagged herself at the Buckingham Palace yesterday. You guys, this realtor hacked social media conversations to highlight what she does as a business owner. I'm just like, I'm going to clap that up. I thought it was so smart to find a culturally relevant conversation and then point it back to her business. So the question now becomes for all of us, what can we do to find social situations and then have them pertain to our business? Now, will this always happen for us? I can't tell you. I know it takes a little bit of work, but I'm gonna lob you a softball. I am going to show you something that I am going to do today. You wanna know what today is? Dr. Martin Luther King. Look at one of my favorite quotes from him. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But by all means, keep moving. Friends, what Dr. King reminds me of is that growth is just constant consistency. Because we can always say, but Jasmine, I can't fly. And then Dr. King will tell you, then run. And if you say, Jasmine, I can't run, Dr. King will tell you to walk. What is Dr. King saying? Just keep moving. And although he was talking about things in a deeply profound cultural movement for humanity, the principle applies to our personal life, to our businesses, to our religious or spiritual relationships, to dealing with all of humanity. So I just took you on the spectrum of really cheeky marketing around a cultural phenomenon, right? the Buckingham Palace and the royal families had some changes, then to a deeply profound social conversation around Dr. Martin Luther King. And what we're doing is we're showcasing how people can talk about socially relevant things in relation to their marketing. So what is one action item I would love for you to take today? Pick one current event or an industry event and post about it. So we just gave examples about current events the royal family, Martin Luther King, but perhaps you have a really small industry that there's like a big conference, or maybe there, there was like somebody who was a mover and a shaker in your industry and they just made a social commentary about the state of the industry that you can then say, X said this, here is my opinion about it. So you're furthering the conversation because oftentimes as business owners, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to come up with new ideas, come up with new content, come up with stuff nobody has ever said before. And like, that's a lot of pressure. We're all doing this independently. So how about we take Dr. Martin Luther King's words and just keep moving. I don't know about you, but I am taking those words to heart. Because when it comes to the idea of keeping moving, that is saying that consistency is key, right? Because we have to keep doing things to remain consistent, to keep our businesses, to keep our names, to keep our brands on top of mind of business owners. And I have made the commitment to show up differently in my business in 2020 than I ever have before. And I made the commitment to say, I'm showing up for other business owners because I'm gonna do big things in my business. I'm gonna double my business this year. Like, I've just made the decision. Do I know exactly all the steps how I'm gonna make it happen? No, but I'm gonna make it happen. So if you are committed to doubling your business, if you're just committed to showing up in an entirely different way, I am here to remind you because Dr. King says, just keep moving, that this comes back to us as business owners. What are you gonna to do to keep moving forward? Enrollment for Social Curator is closing tomorrow, January 21st. If you would like to secure your seat in Social Curator, y'all don't say you didn't know. Okay, we're gonna get into some Q&A. If you have questions, leave them here. Other people have been asking questions all week and I am just here to 
pop up and show the dang thing and show how it works. Let's get into a question from Adam. Should you convert your Instagram account from personal to business if it is used for your actual business? What are the benefits of that? Okay, so Adam is saying, Jasmine, I have a personal Instagram account. Should I be, if I'm using it for business, should I change it to a business account? And the answer is right now, it depends on what your business is. Now, I reserve the right to change my mind next week or next month, but in the current state that Instagram is in, that having a business account is really, really, really great for a few things. Number one, if you have over 10,000 followers on Instagram, if you have a business account, you get the swipe up. Number two, if you have a business and it's a physical location, like you could put your address and you could put a phone number right there in your business account, that's very helpful. A lot of people like that. You have a business account if you want the shop feature, if you want to, if you have a store and you're selling items that you're constantly linking to, amazing. These are all amazing reasons why you should have the business um, account. If you don't have 10,000 followers, if you have a solely online business, right? Like you don't really need people to give like your, their address, right? Like they can still contact you via DM. And if you don't really need the shop function, then you could probably still be using your Instagram account and your personal profile if you so decide. But if you're like, no, Jasmine, I want a personal profile and I want a business profile, well then all by, by all means, go ahead and do that. But I am not the kind of person who's just like broadly, like if you have a business, definitely use your business account. Oh, also, just this morning, I read, I read that Instagram is going to be taking away the analytics for personal accounts beginning in March 2020. So it will also be revoking analytics from any third-party planners, like Planoly, Later, Plan. They will not be able, they, they were grandfathered in to get access to analytics, but Instagram is updating its API and they're not allowing analytics after March 2020. This is another way that Instagram is trying to get people and incentivize them to hands down change from a personal to a business profile if you're using it for business. Okay, I'm getting a live question, so I wanna make sure, dang, dang, people be showing up up in here. Thank you, and muchas gracias. Okay, so what does closing enrollment mean? Closing enrollment for social curator means that we are going to not allow people to come into social curator for two years it's been open enrollment you can come in and you can go out what we want for 2020 is for people who are ready to make the commitment and show up every single month to build their business so starting january 21st we're closing the doors and we're committed to just going deep with the group of people who are on the inside okay socialcurator.com forward slash join you can get all of the information melissa says best decision ever i've been a social curator for 24 hours hey i like this and I can already tell it was a smart investment, so looking forward to doubling down this year. Heck yes, boo-boo, same here. Uh, Kelly says, my Instagram handle is my jewelry business name, but I am trying to incorporate more of me in my account too. Do you think that works? Yes, Kelly, I do. Generally speaking, most of the time, people on social media really want to connect with who they're buying from. Is it a necessity? No. Like, I buy jewelry not knowing the jeweler. But there is a brand, I actually did a Facebook video, a YouTube video and an IGTV. There's this um, jewelry brand that I followed for a very long time. It's called Betsy and Aya and they're based in Portland, Oregon. I followed them on Instagram probably for a year and I just loved their stories. I loved how they were showing up. I loved their designs. And when I went to Portland, I went out of my way to go to their store and buy jewelry. Why? I'd been following their story for a while. I knew them. Is Betsy and Aya the name of the designer? No, it's actually the name of her sister and her daughter. But I just love how they showed up. So do I think personal elements, like behind the scenes, how do you package, what's your inspiration for your designs, all of that stuff, I think it's totally amazing to show on social hands down. Okay, leave your questions here. I'm here to brainstorm for you. Uh, Sue asked, I know you said this before, but how do you do these lives where you skip from video to screen share? I use Zoom most of the time. But it seems like on Facebook Live, once you choose video or screen share, you're stuck with that only. And Sue, that is the case. Uh, I use Wirecast. I get asked every single week what I use. I use Zoom and I also use Wirecast because the beauty of Wirecast, you can switch from full screen me talking to a slide. But I will tell you that Wirecast is expensive. Like it just is. I don't think... Like I invested because it is an investment. It's an initial big investment. Like I think it's like 500 bucks and then you have to pay every month. But here's the thing. I go live 
every week, multiple times a week. So for me, it was a very strong business investment. If you're not sure if going live is your jam, although I think it should be because jasminestar.com forward slash FB live, like I literally walk you through why I think it's so important, but it's, but it's, it's vital because, uh, showing up, you get live, you get a lot more organic reach. You can also use Ecamm, E C M M or B live. Those are two really affordable options that give you similar results. So yes, I love Wirecast, but I'm not being paid to use it. So don't think it's a promo. Uh, let's get into Christy. I live in a small town that has always been my excuse, but this year I made an effort to connect and network with more people uh, this year in my town and it has grown among local people. I've also joined a chamber of commerce and doing that has booked my more, <laughs> booked me more gigs. Oh, I don't know how to read. Basically, Christy Cross has been building her business on social media, but she's like, I want to work locally. So what did she do? She didn't say, I don't know how. She didn't say other people do it better. She didn't say my business is so small. Christy Cross is a photographer. She's very active on my Facebook page and she's also a member of Social Curator, so I know her story and I could share openly. She is from a small town and she's a photographer and she's like, I want to do more local business. And you want to know what she did? She just took action. She stopped with the excuses because any action is better than not taking action at all. Okay. So for those people who are here and they're like, Jasmine, you're all about social media marketing. Number one, make no mistake, that is true. Number two, I am an active networker with people in my town. I am an active event goer of in my town. Even though I know there is like a 98% chance that these people will not be members of Social Curator, I'm still going out and fostering relationships because these people, even if they would never be like a member of Social Curator, they're always referring people who will. So I wanna ask you, because we started off the conversation by saying what are the newest and greatest like tips right now for social media marketing, but you could be like Christy and start taking action to grow your business in ways that are as much offline as they are online. Okay, let's dive into another one of the questions. Uh, Regina Grossenbacher, I have 4,000 friends on Facebook and only 900 on my business page. I get way more traction on my personal profile. Do I focus more on my page or just grow my personal? I educate and give value and just feel more people connect with my personal profile. Well, Regina, I have really good news. You're not alone. So. Facebook has been very open starting in 2019 saying that the algorithm favors personal profiles, period. Like they make no joke about it. They want people who are going to Facebook to see more content from friends on their personal page than business pages. So statistically speaking, you're right. But let's actually get into the analytics of what's actually happening. If you use a personal profile on Facebook for business, Facebook reserves the right to pull your profile. They make no mistake. They do not want people using personal profiles to sell. So don't say you didn't know. Secondly, Regina says that she has 4,000 friends on Facebook, which is incredible. But did you know that Facebook limits your account to 5,000 people? So Regina, once you get to 5,000 people, the only option that people have to connect with you on Facebook would be your Facebook page because you can't accept any more friends. So my question to you is what ladder do you want to build? Do you want to build a ladder that only gets to 5,000 or do you want to build a ladder that gets you higher? Now, I can tell you, I always tell people, don't listen to what I say, watch what I do. I have poured all of my energy into my Facebook page, even though I see my organic reach getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. That's just facts. Like this exact time last year, when I would do a Facebook Live, I would have three times the amount of people. And I just think that my content isn't getting worse. In fact, I would say the opposite. I think, I, I think I'm stronger and smarter and quicker when it comes to business a year later than I was then. It's just Facebook's not giving us the organic juice unless we pay for it. But guess what? The same thing is going to happen on Instagram. That's just the way that social media works is that once a platform has a lot of attention, the only way you siphon, the only way you get that attention is if you pay for it. That's just marketing. So in my mind, I would rather have people on my Facebook page that I can run ads to. 
I would rather have people on my Facebook page so that they know that I don't have like a separate private account where only special people go. Like, but again, totally up to you. But I would say, if you're going to grow, watch how you grow and be extra careful for it. So why do I feel so ardent around having this conversation? Like Regina is not alone. There's a lot of people who are like, on Facebook, it's so much easier on my personal page. And I just feel like other people are growing and I'm kind of stagnant. And I want to take a second and let you know that you are not behind. You are right where you are supposed to be. Every morning, the greatest gift that you could give yourself as a business owner is not compare yourself to what you think you should be or what you think you should be doing. I will be the very first person to tell you that I know the pressure. I could look at other business owners, like people my same age or a similar experience, or maybe we have a, a similar business structure and I look at what they're doing and I'm like, oh God, like they're just doing it. And the temptation is for me to compare myself, but I can choose to tell myself a different story. I can choose to tell myself that I am doing everything I can to get the results that I want. That it is not a matter of if, but a matter of when. When I get to the place that I want, I will be ready. If I do not have what I want right now, it is because I am not ready. If I do not have what I want right now, it is because I am not ready. It is not because I am not worthy, I am dumb, I am behind. I used to tell myself those stories. I used to tell myself that I didn't have what I have because other people had parents who could fund their business. Other people were educated. Other people, other people, other people. But all the time when I was comparing my success to theirs, I was looking at, look at what they had and what I don't have. And instead, I just decided to say, listen, boo, I'm going to get there. But I'm going to get there when the time is right. And I'm going to continue to work. Like my success is a foregone conclusion. That's how I need to show up. That is just real talk. So on the days that you feel bummed or down that you're not where you're supposed to be, let me tell you that you are where you're supposed to be. And you need to keep moving forward. Shout out to Dr. Mar Dr. Martin Luther King on this beautiful day. Okay, uh, let's get into uh, Sheree, Sheree Hudson. Uh, your, uh, my question is, is Social Curator more geared for people who are course creators, lifestyle brands? I'm a hairstylist, but I sell hair online and I wanna grow that side of my business. So I just wanna make sure it's for those of us selling a product. Oh, yo, yo, yo. Okay, for I, I just yesterday on Sunday, I did a Facebook Live. You could scroll down on my Facebook page. It should be the second live video that, that's there. And it was literally all about focusing on one thing. I don't care if you sell hair. I don't care if you're in a construction company. I don't care if you're a jewelry maker. I don't care if you're a course creator. I don't care if you're a blogger. I don't care if you're a librarian or a politician. We're all doing the same thing. Now, I get it, Sheree. You might be like, no, but Jasmine, I sell hair. No, no, no. We're all doing the same thing. We want somebody to have a transaction with us. We want somebody to vote for us. We want somebody to come to our church. We want somebody to buy our hair. We want somebody to buy our photography. We're looking for a transaction. And the way that transactions happen in the 21st century online is through trust. I do not care if you have the sexiest, savviest marketing campaign. I do not care if you have an email funnel that's fully stacked. I do not care if your hair has gotten worldwide recognition and all the hair competitions, you're number one. That doesn't matter to me as a consumer. What I and any other consumer who is willing to give you our credit card on the internet because you're a stranger and we don't know you is by trust. That's it. So whatever it is you're selling, people need to trust you. And how do people trust you on the internet? You have really great copy? You have really awesome photos? No. 
You're an influencer? No. How do people trust you when you show up for them again and again and again and again? I created Social Curator to teach business owners how to show up again and again and again on the good days, on the bad days, on the days where you feel like you got punched in the gut, on the days where you hear people are talking trash, on the days that people are ripping off the ideas that you work so hard to create, on those days, show up. It is easy to show up on social media to sell, sell, sell. It is easy to show up on the holidays to be like, book now, buy one, get one, free shipping, 15% off. It's so easy to sell. What's hard? Showing up when other people won't. So what is Social Curator for? It is for people who have a business, period. Like my daddy always said, punto final. This is it, right here. If you have a business and you want to market it online, Social Curator is the solution. That's it. If you use the caption templates, awesome. If you use the photos, awesome. If you use the marketing plans every month, awesome. Even if you don't use any of that, what happens on the inside of the group is that we have a curriculum and I walk people through coaching. We have a curriculum and we teach people accountability. We have a curriculum and we teach people how to network. We have a curriculum that teaches people how to create trust. I am not selling social media education. Why? I come out here on Facebook and I teach that for free. I go on Instagram, I teach it for free. I go on YouTube, I go on LinkedIn. I teach everything I know about social media. Everything. Why people come into the group? For specific coaching, for accountability, for networking, for masterclasses, for access behind the scenes. That's it. You got a business. We want to see you. That's just straight talk. Enrollment is closing on the 21st. So if you want to get in, get in before you're left out. Okay. Uh, let's get into another live question. Uh, Monica, will Social Creator help me balance two businesses on the same platform? I'm a business development coach, but I also have a side hustle in direct sales that sells hair, hair care and mentoring to other women. Am I confusing my audience? Should I be focusing on building relationships with just under entrepreneurs I want to coach? Okay, so just so that we're very clear, Monica is in direct sales, AKA MLM. It looks like Monica is doing business coaching and then her side hustle is hair care. Now, when you are in direct sales, 99% of MLMs work with you selling the product, Monica sells hair care, but then everybody who she gets to sign up under her name, she's getting growth possibilities for that. She's getting like a kickback for it. So she's coaching people in her downline. If I'm understanding this correctly, Monica, you're trying to build a business coaching that is away from your hair, your hair care and building that team. If I understand that correctly, then yes, you are confusing your audience. If I were you, I would have an account, a very, very personal account about your hair care, like different hairstyles, hair tutorials, you doing your kid's hair, or if you don't have kids, it's like bring a few of your girlfriends over to watch The Bachelor and then do hairstyles or talk about hair care or do hair treatments and put it behind the scenes. Like you really want as, as a direct seller, you really want somebody as you're building your personal brand is to build content to, pe for, to pe make people know you, like you, and trust you. When it, <coughs> I'm dying. <coughs> I'm losing my voice. I've been talking all week. Sorry. If you are trying to coach business owners, then your content shouldn't be about like French braids and like conditioner. You know what I'm saying? That's just real talk. If you're trying to coach business owners, your content should be around free business tips to help business owners. Why they need to trust you. Before anybody buys from you, they have to trust you. If you're watching this right now and you're like, Jasmine, I can't get sales on social media. I don't even know you and I don't know your business. I'll tell you straight out. They just don't trust you. It's not because you're not a good business owner. You're probably a great business owner. You probably have the best coaching or the best essential oils or like the best dog walking services. You're probably the best at what you do. But if people don't trust you, they're never going to buy from you. That's just it. Let's get into another real question. Um, Amber, does it matter if I do the monthly option versus the yearly? Will I still get stay in the program if I pay monthly? Yes, absolutely. Social Curator is a 12-month program that you can pay monthly. And if you sign up before registration closes, we have two bonuses coming your way. We have a bonus all about getting 
free PR. Like how do you market yourself for public relations to get featured on blogs and news outlets and TV shows? That's a bonus that's coming your way. In addition to showing up confidently on camera, we're gonna walk you through a class on how to set up Instagram Live, Facebook Live, how do you use live even if you're really awkward and uncomfortable on camera. Hey, that's happening all before we dive in to the other good stuff. Um, okay, Stacy says, I didn't really use Insta well. It's a random mix of personal, like life kids and a little business mixed in. Do I remove the personal and start over? I joined the security last night. So Stacy, congratulations, welcome to the crew. And I get asked this question all the time. It's Jasmine, do I start over? Once I realize what I want my Instagram account to be about, do I delete all the old photos? And listen, I'm gonna tell you, you will hear this differently from different people. I'm just gonna speak my truth. My truth is we will learn more from our past by the decisions we made and the mistakes we encountered than ever trying to posture or fake that what brought us here was perfection in the past. I do not need a perfect, glorious, curated, ideological Instagram feed. If you're ever bored and you want to go to my Instagram feed in 2014, 2015, it was a hot mess. Like it hurt your eyes. It was so ugly and pathetic. Nobody was engaging. Nobody was liking. And here's the ironic part. I am a professional photographer. There was no reason my Instagram account should be that ugly. There was no reason why people should not have been engaging. I just didn't have a plan and I didn't have a strategy. But when I learned, when I created a plan and when I deployed my strategy and when I showed up consistently and when I started creating, all of a sudden my accounts just completely took off. I do not delete any of those old posts. I am proud of that hot mess entrepreneur who had no idea what she was doing, but still continued to show up again and again. If you want to delete posts, go right ahead. But do you think that by deleting posts, you're going to get more followers, you're going to get more customers? No, I, I'm telling you right out, you won't. Do you think that the time that you spend deleting old posts would be better spent creating new posts and working on your future? Listen, y'all, I am so concerned with my future. I don't want to spend any time regretting the past. Like, dude, that's like real talk. That's like life talk, not just business talk, right? Like we're out here focusing on our future. Can I get an amen? I am thankful for the person who brought me here today. And I am more thankful for the person who I will become. That's just it. That is just it. Because the thing that I've realized again and again is that your timeline for success is made up. Your timeline is fake. Your timeline is an illusion. You have gladly told yourself, I need to be successful by the time I'm 35. I need to get this business off the ground by February 15th. Why? Because you told yourself in your mind that you gotta make it happen by that date or else you're a failure. Okay. You could choose to say that, or you could choose to say that every action you are making today and every action that you are making tomorrow and every action that you are making next week, that all of those things are preparing you for who you need to become to receive the thing that you want. Because if you don't have the thing that you want right now, you're being shaped and molded to be ready for it. This is what I believe with all of my heart, that if I do not have what I want today, it's because I'm getting it in the future. It is because I'm preparing myself for who I need to be to receive the thing that I want. So in the meantime, while I do not have everything that I want, will I stay stuck? No. Will I just sit here in fear and wonder and comparisonitis? Like, oh, why don't I have it? Why does she have it? Why is he doing those things? Why is he going on a helicopter all over New York City? Why does he have a private jet? Why is she gallivanting in the Bahamas and I'm here like cold weather in the winter? It's not for you to know. 
Those people are working and living their life. And the question is, are you working and living yours? Because you're going to get yours when the time is right. The question is, are you willing to do the work when no one is looking? Are you willing to take messy action, scary action, doubtful action, scrappy action, fearful action, small action? My question to you is, are you willing to do whatever it takes to get to where you want to go? Because if you are not taking action, then friend, don't be sad if, if you're not getting results. You must be doing the work, but not doing the work to stay busy. You have to be doing the work with a strategy. You have to be doing the work with a plan. You have to be able to look to other people and say, okay, that person did it and that person's willing to coach me and guide me to where I want to go so I can save time so that I can get what I want sooner. And the answer is yes, that is exactly how it works. It is just you taking action. So Lisa says, I love pictures, but for some reason I shy away from video. Any insight? Yeah, Lisa, I do too. Now I know that that seems crazy and ridiculous because I am on video all the time. Facebook Live, Instagram Live videos. The video is hard for me. But riding a bike was hard for me. And learning how to speak was hard for me. And learning how to drive was hard for me. Um, I grew up obese as a child, like quantifiably obese. And learning how to eat healthy for me was hard. Everything first starts off as hard. But just because something's hard shouldn't stop you from doing the thing you want to do. You just have to do it more frequently to make it easier. That's just it. Everything first starts hard. And that is where most people quit. The people who practice something hard and do it again and again and again, they don't have to be the best on video. They don't need a fancy setup. I am a, I'm sitting in front of a window in my office on a bar cart from Target for $75. And I'm going live. I do not think that I am cute, wonderful, savvy, smart, adorable, talkative, witty, rich. I don't think I'm any of those things. I just show up. People often wonder, like, I think that people are just like, okay, we get her, but we don't really get her. Like, what is it? Because I'm not really an influencer, right? Like I've built out social followings and it's fine and it's wonderful, but that's not really my jam. Um, I'm a photographer. I'm very proud of it. People are like, she's not like the best photographer. Okay. People say, well, yeah, we, we've heard other like business strategists and like, she's cool, but like, we don't get her. All right. We see X. Anybody can throw anything at me again and again. I am the first to say I am not the best at whatever you want me to be the best at. And I'm the first to say that I don't know what I'm doing 100% of the time. But I'm also the first to say that I do whatever it takes to get to where I want to go. What makes me special is the fact that I don't give up. That's it. That's it. My big claim to fame is, yo, I'm average. I just show up. Yo, I got a camera and there's other people who are better at it than I am. I still show up. There's other people with bigger audiences because on bigger stages with bigger newsletter lists and fancier websites and better tech for their business. I just show up. If your goal is to build a business and you are not the best, welcome to the freaking club. There was a time in human history that only the people who were the best succeeded. That only the people who went to Harvard succeeded. That only the people who had their daddies and their great grandpappies sitting in boardrooms that allowed them the keys into the boardroom. And now today, give it up for the freaking internet because the internet abolished that. Do you have Wi-Fi and a cell phone? Congratulations, you can build a business. We're living in the best 
time of human history. We're living in a shift of humanity where people who aren't the best and have nothing can do awesome things. It blows my mind that people want to sit there and just say, you know what? I just don't have it. I live in a small town. I have a re really unique product. I don't have a lot of followers. I didn't go to school. I taught myself on YouTube. Clap that up. You are willing to do what other people are not. You are willing to take the little that you have and make magic with it. You are willing to get gritty. You are willing to be embarrassed. You are willing to have people talk smack behind your back. Good for you because people's opinions of you doesn't pay your dang bills. So for all of you all who are average but keep on getting up, you home. We're here. And I am so excited to make 2020 my own. I have decided that my success in 2020 is a foregone conclusion. It's done. Why? Because I got swag? Why? Because I have a great financial planner? Why? Because I have a crystal ball and I can see the future? Nope. My success is a foregone conclusion because my actions map my aspirations. What I am doing every single day is getting me closer to where I want to go. I'm a success. I know it's going to happen. Why? I'm just showing up and it might not happen in the timeline that I want it, but it's going to happen in the timeline that I'm ready. So for those of y'all who are ready to make 2020 your own, we are closing registration for socialcurator.com. I would love to see you on the inside as we go deep with group coaching, accessibility, masterclasses, and turnkey social media uh, I don't know what's going on here. You guys, have you guys noticed this hair? This is like the one rogue hair. This hair is the jasmine star of all hairs. The jasmine star of all hairs is just, this is what everybody else is doing. And the jasmine star hair is just going to just do her own thing. Clap it on up. Okay. So cheers to all of y'all with weird hair, doing your own thing, marching to the beat of your own drum. I hope to see you on the inside of Social Curator. This week, we're having kickoff week. Five live classes and coaching just to start you off for the new year. We got some bonuses. They're expiring tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Much love, y'all. Have a good one.